we're going to start off by just looking at the Six Nations and what happened in round one. Yes, yeah. indeed, yeah. So what did happen in round one? <laughs> well, the, well, the first thing that happened was that uh, we had Italy as the curtain raisers, uh, as they usually are, fr- hosting France, and uh, that game finished 50 points to 10. Nice round figures there. Um, yeah, it was it was as expected, kind of. Uh, but what was nice to see was just how good France looked in terms of putting their attacking flow onto it and uh, and grabbing some lovely tries. Scoring fifty points is is always good, regardless of the opposition. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a lovely lovely game of rugby to kick things off. I thought it was. It was. It was. It, there was. Uh, there was some beautiful attacking rugby. Not. Uh, not least facilitated by by how Italy approached the game. Um, but France were able to get a lot off. Uh, Dupont obviously had a stellar first half where he just ran the show and threw some very lovely passes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Teddy Thomas looking outstanding. Arthur Vincent in the midfield looking excellent. Jalibert really betting into his role. Some nice performances in, in the in the pack, including Dylan Cretan coming in. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For for, for Francois Croix maybe um staking a claim for that jersey in the future. Um. Yeah. All sorts of exciting things from 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 a French perspective. From an Italian perspective, obviously it was you know that it, it was it, they're getting a lot of praise for sort of how they approach the game. Yeah, uh, Garbisi running a nice attack, moving the ball quite well. Certainly um, made it pretty to watch. That seems to be where, where most people are angling from. It's from a fan's yeah. point of view, it was a beautiful game. And when they from had when they had the ball, less so. they wanted to move it. And when they didn't have the ball, they wanted to let France move it. Yeah, and so it was kind of that was kind of the picture. I mean, it, if you look at it from a statistical point of view, there was. They were act- there was a lot of promising play. They moved the ball very nicely in that first half. They actually got into the French 22 with the ball on seven occasions. Yeah. And the issues really were just not taking uh, chances. They got three. They registered three points from those seven visits to the yes, 22. I that that um, stat popped up was a point four visits or point four points per visit. It's, yeah. Uh, just not enough. In, in term. Indeed, like they had. Uh, obviously, Alder came up with a big play when they first entered the 22, making the steal. That's one of those things that happens. But then, you know, taking a three pointer, which is obviously a bugbear of yours. Mm. Uh, the Varney pass that bumped off the off the lock that went forward, just hectic play and yeah. not really controlling the ball. Uh, the forward pass ruling that chopped off the try, which is obviously gooding. A, a, a silly crossing play at the start of the second half. Yeah. Um, yeah, just so many little errors. Yeah. The Sperandio try towards the end was well taken, but so many little errors and so little control in a lot of ways. With Garbisi running the offense, it was quite nice. Yeah, and but very... driving a nice tempo from nine, but as you say, it was a little bit frantic at times mm. as opposed to controlled. And it was it was what we were asking for them, as well as our usual like tackle technique. Their tackle completion rate was pretty low as well. I think 87 tackles made, 28 missed, which is pretty... Uh, you need to need to make more tackles than that yeah. but also on another thing just uh, like on a ma- like not a statistical point but just you need to be tougher to play against like the praise they're getting is for for kind of in in the sunshine in Rome creating this yeah. lovely picture where it was a shootout with France which they were always going to lose but it was lovely to watch from a neutral po- yeah. fan point of view but if you're if you're Franco Smith and his reaction to the I think the first French try was was a picture that was telling where it's just head in his hands and the whole coaching box going no because they had been like nearly bo- bossing the game and certainly playing their own mm-hmm. putting their own, uh, own game in but not registering scores yeah. and then allowing France into their territory and then compounding errors as well yeah, there was one there, moment where uh, there was there was there was a sequence in particular mm. that um uh, that uh, that stood out I mean you could you could pick from a million sequences but there was one in the middle of the half uh, after the Varney pass went to deck on the on the French line. Mm-hmm. There was a French scrum and Italy were penalised at the scrum. And you could see they were frustrated. The chance yeah. was gone. They had to move down the field. But then from there, sort of tilted from the, the blown opportunity, you had Luca Bigi, the captain, just come flying in the side at the mall that France had from the line out up the pitch. Gave them a chance to go down the field. France do so. And then from the ensuing play... It's the one. It's the Fiku try with the little chip in behind, where the whole back line just comes forward. And, and after, no one in behind, yeah, after yeah, a phase, yeah. nobody nobody looks up and, and 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 thinks to thinks to look in that space and to cover the chip in behind after the after the uh, initial set piece where the, the mall is formed and the offside line changes. They all fly up. And nobody covers the space in behind. And it's just a really easy try. And yeah. It's an example of just compounding, making turning one error into four. Yeah. And moving the practical really without... show was they sh- they felt they should have had a try and maybe they should have and maybe yeah. they should have executed better and whatever but to allow the go- from to go from mm. we should have had a try and we're in, in the right territory and like 
for like in a, in a matter of like two minutes yeah. suddenly you're under your own sticks because you've just made error after error yeah. after error and you could see the frustration in Franco Smith in response to that try it was just it was yeah. everything like coach killing errors I'm sure they talked about it all week but uh, but in in yeah. practice like one thing one or two things didn't go their way and then they do get tilted and that's where confidence is based on evidence and they don't have evidence of be- to mine from in terms of beating these teams yeah. and they just seem a little brittle uh, at times yeah, well, well, well. When, when things started to go wrong for them everything got more frantic even on the ball where they had been working nice offense things got more frantic the passes got more loose yeah there is an element of like they, they do need to marry this lovely franco smith attack that's that's yielding some results without without quite yielding any in the red zone yeah um they're moving the ball quite nicely they just need to marry that which is a little more tightness and a little more street wiseness yeah. and on a positive end you might su- like it's a very young team that it might is. come in time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are very few caps all yeah. around in that uh, squad, so you do want them trying things, yeah. and even if they don't come off. Of course. But, uh, yeah. But no. On the negative end, it's just they they don't seem to be they don't seem to be able to they don't seem to be throwing themselves into the game and, and staying in the moment and really committing to to being difficult, like to making every try difficult to score. To yeah, just make it just throwing themselves at every tackle. Yeah, those are the kind of things that. If you, you want you to want win, to see. if you want to win games, you're gonna they're gonna to have to deliver on. But obviously, it was a tough, tough outing for them. Yes, and they did make it a pretty game to watch. And from a French perspective, um, it was it was a lovely, lovely oh, performance. Very, it was the prettiest game to watch if you were watching it in in a blue jersey, looking looking for La France. Like they 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 drove a lovely tempo. Dupont is just a dream at nine, and uh, even without Entomac mm-hmm. there, they had Jelly Bear. It feels like they can do whatever they like at 10 because they do have such a weapon at 9 especially against a, a kind of somewhat fragmented line he's just so good at spotting those mismatches and getting his big game breaking forwards onto the ball uh, with a good aggressive ca- carries and contacts and yeah they, they really started to click that sequence in the I think it was the third quarter where they really put the game to bed with a couple of tries that were nice and it yeah. was just uh, yeah they looked in, in full flow and they are very very pretty and ominous sight yeah, when and, they and are. N- nothing too wild about what no. they do with the ball it's all very sort of playmaky mm-hmm. um you know they, they 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 win contacts they move the ball quickly they find one-on-one matchups or guys in a bit of space like teddy Toma yeah and those guys make things happen i mean they do have a couple of nice first phase moves but by and large there's nothing too clever about what they're doing in terms of moving the ball sometimes you'll see in other games they flood channels with men it wasn't too much of that today but i think what, what sets them apart is the link play and the vision in terms of finding a try. I mean, they run lines to score tries, and, and I think they're the best team in the world, I would say, including the All Blacks at the moment, at just turning line breaks into tries. Usually that same phase, yeah. but either that phase or the next phase after, they are brilliant at, at being clinical once they've broken the line. And it comes yeah. from excellent support play and great attacking instincts from the whole back line yeah. and, and some of the forward pack as well. Like yeah. that's the thing that yeah. really steps out and while a lot of teams put 50 on Ingl- on Italy it was very encouraging from a French perspective yeah. the French team eyeing a, a grand slam this year eyeing well, yeah, at least they're a Six per- Nations they're, Championship they, it's, they, it's the only like you can you can't win a Six Nations in an opening day fixture against Italy but you can lose one or, or get course, close yeah, to blowing yeah. it and uh, they did nothing of the sort yeah they teed themselves up uh, nicely for the uh, for the tournament to come and they sit at top of the table currently um, as a result of that result um, but then that was only the, the curtain raiser on Saturday because next up we had the Calcutta Cup in Twickenham, England v Scotland, uh, a game that had gone England's way for many, many years. They were saying 40 years since the last victory yeah, yeah. of Scotland in, in that ground. And uh, sure enough, it came. 11 points to six. Scotland ran out with worthy winners, very worthy winners, in fact, uh, on the day. They were they were the only team playing rugby, to be honest, on the pitch. Oh, yeah. this, was, um, this, was, this was just the highlight of the weekend as far as a game mm-hmm. of rugby was concerned. 11 to six had finished, and yet it was, it was compelling in so many ways, just from a narrative point of view. Yeah. Scotland obviously getting that win. I, I thought actually that the... The way it was being coloured was a little ungenerous to Scotland in the sense that, like, even though you're just saying, like, I know it's been forever since they won at Twickenham, but actually, like, this is the third time in four years they're yeah. going to be bringing the Calcutta Cup back oh, to Murray. That, that is more, a more accurate way like, to put it because this team have good memories against England. They just yeah. hadn't quite managed to string it all together. They did uh, in beautiful phases in that 38-all draw, but they let that one slip results-wise, but they didn't let it slip Finn, this time. Finn Russell has three wins and one draw in his last four games against England. Yeah. like As, as much as England have been dominant against other sides, sides, Scotland have consistently put it up to England and have yet to be given something to fear from them. And while you know neither of us did call them to win the game, and in that sense it was a shock, 
it was it was it was not certainly to Scotland it wasn't a shock and then it was it wasn't certainly the outside shot that a lot of sort of pundits were giving it yeah. even during the game and after the game selling it as this sort of miracle it wasn't it didn't I mean, it was look miraculous it was... no even for for the whole last quarter I was just convinced Scotland were going to yeah. win because I couldn't see anywhere where English points were coming from even the six points they got I thought they were very lucky to have I thought yeah. Scotland kind of gift wrapped them uh, for them in the, at the end of the first half but besides that they just they really did nothing with the ball yeah. all day. I and mean, that Scot- like Scotland brought that physicality that disrupted the bullying style they want to have when they do have the ball. The ta- Scottish tackling was ferocious and committed. But then also, just in terms of England applying this kicking game, Scotland were the one applying the kicking yes. game by the end. They yes. were dominating. And that was the that. difference. Like last yeah. year, the packs evened each other e- each other out, and Scotland even might have might have edged it at the set piece. Mm-hmm. And then England won the game with a couple of crucial plays, edging the territory battle, edging the kicking battle in that thirteen to six win in Murrayfield. Yeah, and this actually played out as a very similar game, except the difference maker was what went on in the kicking game. And uh, yeah, just the combination. I think Finn Russell had sort of an up and down game. He wasn't he was he wasn't as explosive self, but made enough plays. Mm-hmm. It sort of played out from a Scottish point of view, pretty much ideally when you consider how well that team built last year, where it was just basically that team with a good ten, with a competent ten, mm-hmm. as opposed to sort of your Van der Waals and, and even Hastings not quite at the level. Duncan like, Weir at one point. Yeah, yeah, Finn comes in and he can execute some nice passes and he can probe and he can he can make that try happen in a way that other tens can't. Yes. Which is the game deciding thing. Um, and his kicking game was was probing, and he put up some nice bombs. The one for for Maitland to recover that led to the try was brilliant. Yeah. But really, it was it was all about Stuart Hogg. Man of the match, Stewie. He man, was, like yeah. he, had, he he's gone to Exeter obviously and had a good time, but he had such a tough year in 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 the captaincy last year. I'd like, you know, he didn't play particularly badly in general play, but some of the killer moments you look back to like dropping the ball over the line against Ireland making that mistake against England which leads to their only try yeah. kicking the ball out against the French yes, um, that, <laughs> that, that, that sort of game costing play you had all these sort of bizarre negative moments in an otherwise very good season yeah, yeah. And, and and to come together and like with, with obviously with Finn back in the picture but to steal his thunder and steal the show yeah. booting those spiral balls playing with just tremendous confidence and, and really and defu- it, as well as exposing kicks, England. diffusing yeah. England's kicks like they yeah. were, England were not finding grass at all they weren't finding anything the kicks were speculative at best yeah. and uh, Hogg was just game for all of that and in fact the other two as well uh, Van der Merwe and even Maitland under the high ball they dominated their yeah. their uh, opposite numbers and even th- that uh, drop on 70 minutes from Johnny May just a cold drop under no pressure yeah. was just kind of a revealing moment of like now even the kicking game's going wrong for you today lads yeah. nothing's nothing's really working it's not purring it's a Scottish day and oh, uh, despite yeah. Scotland like if you were a Scottish fan I'm sure you were nervous in those last 10 yeah. minutes but I as a, as a neutral watching it was just convinced England aren't going to score here yeah. despite the fact that Scotland were giving them ins which would be a little work on for them they need to be a little bit better at just like when they're that much dom- much better than a team on a day yeah. put, a, put a score get a score or two yeah. ahead it, instead it was, it was an issue yeah. for them last year as well and while the yeah. weather played into it like with Finn Russell on the pitch as well taking a few more scores would be crucial and it does look like goal kicking is going to be an issue you know you talk That's about true, winter yeah. winter windy rugby mm. um, just, it was one of the few, few games you'd really notice the lack of a laid law actually I think yeah. you said it as we were watching it's going yeah you could see why laid law was in this team for so long and mm. taking those kicks they don't really have many out and out place kickers in there because Finn isn't one he doesn't tend to do yeah. it for Rassing either so it's uh, it's tough to expect it of him but it's it's definitely could be a factor going on in winter rugby but it didn't matter this time at all they got the game winning try it was a, a classic Six Nations contest in terms of the low scores the physicality the ferocity yeah. uh, and, and then ultimately one game winning moment which came early enough in this in this instance in, with uh, the Van der Merwe try which was really well taken yeah and very exciting in terms of, in terms of what that attack can build on you're talking yeah. about like fi- Finn Russell, Redpath, Hall, yeah. the the ball going uh, from 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 hand to hand to hand, and that gives Turner the ball with the two on one on the outside, which Duhan finishes so well. Yeah. Um. But I mean, like that access could be really, really great. Yeah. Redpath the, looked really good. Yeah. Excellent passers of a ball. Really great on the ball. A threat on the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, a nightmare for defenders to to deal with. And in this era of defense, I think there there's definitely scope for those for those guys when put into position to open up some defenses. So it's exciting for Scotland. It is. Yeah. I mean, they owned the the set 
set-piece battle. Yes. They poached some line-outs. George Turner was incredible with his throwing yeah. darts. He had so many line-outs to he throw. Was, he, in he, the I game. thought he was in the running for man of the match, considering yeah. just even coming in, like they were talk, pre-match talk about them being light in the in the, in the the tight, which was a r- wrong chat, yeah. but uh, just the fact that they were missing McAnally and uh, Fraser Brown as well. So him coming in as ostensibly third choice and putting in such a classy, classy showing as that uh, was was really worthy of admiration as well. And then just some key met like Hamish Watson mopping up everything, every yeah. loose little bit of ball that seemed to seemed to materialise. It was it was Hamish on the end. Yeah, of he it. made so many um, plays, carried ferociously. Matt yeah. Fagerson likewise, and then Johnny yeah. Gray, Johnny yeah. Gray, just and making the other key fa- plays the, the on two Fagersons actually. Yeah, was it Matt uh, Xander and Matt yes. were, were very <laughs> and good in the loose. And Xander had one hiccup in the the very first scrum. He went down, and you were very annoyed at him for it. But then they won a scrum penalty the next yeah. engagement, and it was just. Oh no, they were all was, over. It was they, great. They, were, they yeah. fancied it, and they knew they had the measure of the English pack. Yeah. And there are a few packs who they don't have the measure of, and then genuinely, uh, if they don't get in their own way, um, the the makeup of this team is championship quality. It's yeah. excellent. Their pack is ferocious. It's physical. Um, with Johnny Gray now back to top form, there's yeah. just a lot, a lot of defensive and offensive playmakers, great ball carrying, an excellent world class 10, a lovely operator outside him in Red Path, world class fullback, and excellent, excellent finishers out wide. Even Chris Harris is just like a perfect balance to Red Path in terms of what they do. Yeah. There are questions about what they'll do defensively. Obviously, England didn't ask too many questions, no. yeah. but it's very, very exciting for Scotland. I mean, they're, 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 they're in their best, it's their their toughest fixture historically. Their toughest fixture out of the way in week one, and now they are in great shape to to make a run for some silverware, be it a triple crown or even more. Maybe they're in a great shape in great shape after week one. England, by contrast, are are backs to the wall again after an opening day loss, which yeah. was the same last year as well. Then they went on to win it. So last year, the, the the bonus point they were given on week one proved crucial. It's what won them the tournament, and as is why I don't really resent. Um, Scots for going for that um, drop for, goal. For that drop goal. It was yeah. an awful pass from Steel, Steel which kind of gave it. England the in. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, if they'd kicked that drop goal, it would have been great to to deprive England of the of the bonus point. And I love that they were thinking about that. They were thinking on a championship level. Yeah, because they need to be. They should be confident. But uh, yeah, from an England point of view, they they get out with a bonus point, which could be crucial. But my oh my, they do have to improve. No, they didn't really. Um, deserve, if they were honest with themselves, they'd tell themselves they didn't deserve that bonus point. They escaped with one because, yeah. as I said, the six points they scored felt cheap. They felt yeah. like the Scots and, just and handed I mean, them to the, them. The, 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 um, the chance Scotland gave them the one more possession was no mercy like they weren't going to score no. and yeah they did well you spend a whole season refusing to attack and then when you have to attack you can't remember how yeah. and that it was happens. kind of what it was it like happens. you see yeah. it with some teams as well but yeah England have spent pretty much a season kicking the ball and defending yeah, and well, it he, was exposed like the the long exits the exits that are in field were something that were employed by Scotland again yeah. we saw it with France with Boutier as well it seems to be their undoing because they just they will kick it back and then yeah. even when George uh, Ford came in as a last last yeah. chance saloon kind of thing we're bringing in our dual distributors first time he got a bit of clean ball in the middle third he kicked it away as yeah. well it was just it was and the, the, weird kick, to the watch. kicks weren't good either no. like they weren't moving the defense around Scotland were so wise to it and they just hammer it deep there was no counter attacking threat mm-hmm. so the Scots could just hammer it deep yeah you got Stuart to have a spiral kick fantastic yeah. and I, what what I love about that as well is that it's going to um it's going to alter the game again. I mean, last year we got into this position where every team off restarts from England at the World Cup, inspired by England's World Cup dismantlings of Australia and New Zealand. Every team off the restart now pings it deep mm-hmm. into the corner, puts the pressure on. You saw England get a bit of purchase early doors, putting pressure on the Ali Price yeah, left two foot charge box downs, kick. Yeah. Um, but Scotland did an excellent job of making the adjustment there. But um, uh, that's been sort of the go-to tactic for just about every team. But now the teams are coming in with their bootiers and their hogs and their long spirals. Yeah. You might actually start to see that tactic fail to work a bit more and the pinning back not being the best option. And then all of a sudden you might have a couple of teams trying to kick to recover. Yeah. What it and is, is it, an anti-box kick play. And they did it as well in yeah. this instance. They, they kick to the wrong side for whatever uh, yeah. footed. Like if it's a left footer, they kick to the right hand side. So it's curling away from the touchline. Mm-hmm. And if it's a right footer, vice versa. They like England have done that uniformly for 
the whole like two years, Since two years. The only yeah. exception was the World Cup final when they kicked it to Villy Larue. But yeah. uh, but besides that, they've tried to pin teams back and and relied on the box kicking exit into touch, where they're setting up an offensive set from within the ten between the ten meter and the uh, twenty two. That's what their whole game yeah. is. And and shy of achieving that set piece, they seem content to just kick it until they do. And, yeah. uh, they, oh, like, they don't. They don't play any rugby in their own half. I mean, the the stats kind of reveal it. No. Um, you know they what? It, well, how badly did the territory game go for them? They ended up with thirty percent territory, which is what's not like them. Yeah, thirty five percent possession. That's right where they have been. Yeah. Um. Here's the mad stats. They won fifty six rooks, right? So they had twenty five gain line carries. Mm-hmm. So they had twenty five carries. They carried the ball twenty five times. No clean breaks. Two offloads. Thirty five kicks from hand. So they kicked more. Kicked way more than they carried yeah. in the it's whole nuts. game. It's nuts. Um, yeah, it's For so. such a big, dynamic yeah. team, it's just and crazy. Like when you've seen what Sarri's like Ollie are Lawrence. doing... Years Ollie yeah. Lawrence comes What's into the, the team point? at 12. Why on earth would you start Ollie, start Ollie Lawrence when you've no business in having well, to touch the, the ball? Well, as we um, had thought, was maybe <laughs> the thought was to run down Redpath's channel and try and test him, which they just didn't, didn't do at didn't all. Happen. So Redpath remains, as, as he looked great... He remains largely untested on defence because England yeah. did not go there. They Although just he did come up with a clutch turnover towards the end, which was great. Yeah, you know, he had a great um, performance all round, but uh, I'd expect sterner questions to be asked of a Scottish defence in any other game, even the Italy yeah. game, because they'll keep the ball in hand and, and go through some phases. Yeah, it was bizarre to see England so impotent, but I uh, can't say I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was a fantastic game to watch, but uh, yeah, England will really need to uh, use this window now to kind of reset things and try and set some things right they need to start playing a bit more rugby yeah, and they can't it's not beyond them of course no, uh, they're still all, the champions we all know the, the, the talent that they have and they, they, they may yet be back we will come back to those teams in, 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 in the previews later on but that was a tremendous game by certainly the game of the weekend oh yeah um, the other game uh, Sunday's game in the Wales. running it was a good game too but... yeah Wales against Ireland um, I see what I've written down here is Wales 16 Ireland 21 that's not right <laughs> it's the other way around Wales 21 Ireland 16 we're still dreaming <laughs> dreaming here a five point win for Wales yes. um, obviously Ireland with 14 men very attritional game by and large you yes know, it, it's bandied around a lot but there were just there were a hell of a lot of knocks from yeah. the from the moment Lydia went off and then yeah. I think James Ryan followed him shortly after and it was four just head real. injuries in the game rake load of injuries um, yeah it was it was it was highly hotly contested and quite physical and yeah just bizarrely attritional as well but it was a close game very dramatic towards the end um, starting with Wales just looking at it from their perspective they were in a position where they just desperately needed a win of any kind yeah they did, they did get that did a great job in the third quarter of just taking the couple of tries I mean I didn't think they were excellent to be honest at just creating and finding entry points there was a lot of playoff nine. Dan Bigger was very not really a factor, which yeah. is weird. One you know, he, he's unusual. A, yeah. But it was it was tactical. Like they didn't really use him as a kicking option. They didn't really kick to. They did they, like the bomb. The the kicks that they kicked in the middle of the park were all box kicks, and none of them really worked. Yeah. Apart from like the odd Keith Earls drop, but it wasn't really born of pressure or born of anything. Yeah. So the entry points they got into the into the twenty two were actually quite lucky. Like it was a Keith Earls sliced kick that was out in the full, which gave them a line out five out for one of the tries the other one was a Gary Ringrose knock on where he was trying to break Forcing out off the, the scrum yeah. and, and, but what they did so well was off those oh, the transition drove a great. tempo yeah, yeah. moved the ball really well took some took a couple of nice tries yes. and, and did it at speed and with a bit of vision I thought Navidi coming into the game was magnificent obviously yeah. it sucked that Lydia went off and he was doing a good job of chopping stander and the like yeah. but Navidi coming in was an excellent playmaker Tipperick in the back line they moved the ball really well when they once they get into a position to attack, but it's just generating those positions and moving down the field where there'd be issues. Yeah, and, and I, I thought actually what was alarming was the second quarter after um, after the, after red, the card. red card, like they conceded thirteen straight points, and it was really like Ireland were Ireland had all the ball, like they exited really well. With and it wasn't goal. just that they were winning all the collisions as well. Yeah. There was there was a, a period in that in in that quarter where Wales yeah. just were soaking every tackle. Yeah, and, and they just wore them down. Like, speed, yeah. they, 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 I think three consecutive drives they just scored. They chalked up points. The Wales kicked off. Ireland hammered it deep. Wales gave Ireland back the ball, and Ireland just set up another attack. And it was just very very easy. There wasn't anything you know clever about what Ireland were doing. It was simple one out runners. But when they did it with a bit of pace and they were winning contacts, Wales found it tough to deal with. And they didn't really have a jackal threat. You know, I think they made three turnovers in the game despite having, like, you know, Ireland having over 60% of possession yeah. as compared to Ireland's six turnovers. So that, that was kind of alarming for them. 
and and ultimately just conceded the try. But I think they yeah. they were they rallied well in the second half and, and made a better defensive show of it up until that last well, the very sequence last sequence where they, where they yeah. sh- tried to lose the game panicked gave up soap tackles gave up penalties George North giving away that penalty towards the end yeah. and they were blessed that uh, that uh, um, Billy Burns kicked it dead because they were putting yes. themselves in a position to lose a game they shouldn't have lost against 14 men Yeah. Um, although shout out to Tipperick who like that tackle on Gary Ringrose was make or break oh, yeah, when Ringrose breaks through yeah. and, he's, and he stepped the full back and it's oh my god he's going to score he had the pace on everybody and it was a world class tackle yeah. his 29th of the game and when you consider what a weapon he is on offense just putting in that much output on defense yeah, as well he's, he's like a workhorse he's, he's like absolutely he's, fantastic he's been far their best player by yeah. far their oh, best player even better than Alan Wynne Jones yeah Alan Wynne Jones he's their best player stro- he was struggling a bit yeah. towards the end with the pace of it and actually their line out it was, the, like, it was a, a turnaround from the last few seasons in terms of Ireland were pil- pilfering a few their line outs and they weren't quite firing well Ken Owens obviously fresh back in but they did as you said they did the most important thing from a Wales point of view which was getting a win getting off yeah. to a winning start and now they're, they're such a team. momentum team they like, are they, yeah they're like a, they, they have a chance for a grand slam now that's they yeah, like it's it's genuinely the can they can keep improving week on week it's it's not not uh, beyond the realms of possibility despite the uh, the poor season and but, the looming but the, injury crisis and the looming injury crisis and the fact that as you said they, they nearly tried to blow it at home but they didn't <laughs> they didn't and uh, uh, yeah, for, just then from from our own point of view, last but not least, I guess uh, Ireland. Yeah, it was a bad bad start um, to to this campaign. Yeah. Um, obviously, the red card was 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 obviously a red card, but it would set them set them way behind in terms of what their plan was for the game and and what their output then had to be. From then, they had put together a nice quarter in response to that, but. Uh, a few key individual mistakes, um, on, like on a micro scale. If you're looking at it, there were just there were a few mistakes. You had Peter O'Mahony with the the red card. You had Keith Earls with several mistakes throughout the course of the game, including some key drops, kick out on the full. Well, that, and, that sequence leading up to the <laughs> try where he smacks a guy in the air and gives away a penalty. Wales kick it down. And then Ireland poached the line out, and instantly he just kicks it out in the full and gives them a line out five. Yeah, and then he had a couple of drops from high balls as well. Yeah, Keith Earls kind of all over the place. Yeah, and then Billy Burns, as you pointed out, with the kick out on the full, and then Sexton have done one similar as well in the in the early going. It's it's a lot of it was the old guard not delivering in that regard. Like the, a lot of their key playmakers were guys like Gary Ringrose or or James Lowe, who were just not yeah, seeing I mean, enough he, ball. Even even um, Ronan Kelleher, like off the bench, there, there was a lot. Like Henshaw had a good game as well. I mean, I think he was relishing the role of auxiliary flanker that he was cast in <laughs> yes. when, when Peter O'Mahony wasn't in. But I mean, like Henshaw can work in a funny kind of a way. I've, I've given out about him not being able to pass from 12, but he can work as a guy running onto the ball if, if it's married with other plays. Mm-hmm. But it's it's at halfback. And as you say, the veterans, like it, they, they really are struggling. Like Sexton was awful. Like, yeah. I watched the game back today. I think like he was all over he the was place. Sitting deep and he shipping it yeah, along. He, looked, he yeah. looked like a guy who was terrified of taking a contact, which isn't like him. He was very much sitting back and just throwing sort of half passes. Sometimes he was getting lost. He was just kicking the ball away with poor grubbers. Yeah. He was His kicking was nowhere near good enough. He didn't distribute as well as Gary Ringrose from 13. Nope. And, and likewise, Connor Murray, um, you know, but like the distribution at times, you could get the speed up and you felt like there was enough there. But when Gibson Park came on, the tempo was much quicker and they were able to link more. Yeah. And the reality is for Ireland, like, that they have excellent, excellent playmakers. I mean, playmakers. I mean we didn't even touch on uh, Ty Byrne, yeah. who, who was, was awesome brilliant both sides games, of the ball. Yeah, especially as soon as the red card came, he, he really stepped up. Yeah. He made so many great plays in the line out, in the loose, all over oh, everywhere, 80 yeah. plus minutes. No James he, Ryan, no Peter Mahoney in there, no leadership core, and he was out there making plays. And it was a lot of young guys who are who are talented and exciting out there trying to make plays Jordan yeah. Larmer even off the bench and, 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 a, and a halfback combination that neither facilitates it nor adds to the game in any way just yeah. sucks the tempo out of it yeah. and actually like you look at the the, 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 the the responsibility of the Welsh points they had the two tries obviously now the the first Welsh try was a, a ring rose error. It was one of very few ring rose errors. The response to the it, offload, yeah, yeah. The response to it was poor for me and Henderson, who had an otherwise decent contribution, but he had like a, a trifecta of horrible plays. Like ring rose knocks the ball on, and he the ball falls to him, and he could just pick it up, and it's a dead play in a Welsh scrum, but he fumbles it, yeah. and Wales pick it up. And yeah. then he kind of half makes a tackle and doesn't roll away and gives a penalty away. And then he gets up and he's slow to cover the blind side and he leans into the ruck and Navidi spots it and just flicks it out to George yeah. North and he's not in the space that he should be. So it's actually a horrible picture a for, for, sequence, for yeah. Ian Anderson. Yeah. Um, but outside of that score, 
like he, the other tries is set up entirely from just a, a nothing kicking duel two calamitous errors from Keith Earls and, and seven and, points yeah and it's seven points and then yeah. the three three pointers Peter Amahani entry at the side Johnny Sexton high tackle Connor Murray taking out a blocker yeah and it's like the, the veterans of the team, the uh, the alleged leadership core, are, are not helping the young guys. The young guys are playing well in spite of it. Yeah. And it puts them in this weird position where, I don't know, are they going to... Are they going to keep leaning into these guys? Like they really did hurt them. Yeah. I thought Sexton and Murray really hurt Ireland. Yeah. Uh, I thought they they didn't make a good tempo. They didn't kick well. Yeah. They didn't they didn't make any really good plays. And outside them, things were happening. Yeah. And it just they didn't facilitate any of it. They didn't see the game. Like I was thinking, like your ideal situation with a Sexton is like that he's going to be this sort of veteran quarterback. You know, he doesn't quite have the the talent and the raw ability that he used to, but what he does have is this ability to read defenders and put his his talented you know weapons on the ball in space and it's just it's not no, happening not seeing any um, of that yeah i just i just I, I i would be almost willing to stick a fork in it and just get a get a guy like billy burns in as bad as his cameo was just to facilitate the guys around yeah. him and, and not try and force the issue so much not dictate the tempos and make it slower yeah, so that it I, suits you to be honest yeah <laughs> i agree i think both halfbacks were bad i what, what i do think is our point our macro point is is right like sexton isn't at the level he he was Unfortunately, he still is our, our best 10 at the moment in the country. I, I kind of think so, because I just mm. don't rate the caliber of the other guys. And then Billy Burns' cameo was, was another one to mm. reinforce that. What I do, I just, like, you, you want him, you want someone taking the jersey off him. He's not producing at the level he, what he was. Obviously, that's true. But if you don't have any adequate replacements for him, you may have to stick with him. What we do have is adequate replacements at nine. We actually yeah. have a load of nines who aren't in the squad who are playing better rugby than Conor Murray at the moment. Yeah. Um, like, and then the difference when Gibson Park was on was night and day. Like, it, like even if Sexton's there, he's he'll it'll be forced upon mm. him a quicker tempo if he's playing with Gibson yeah, Park. Yeah, listen, I hear you. Um, I, I'd like, like I, the, the nine sets the tempo, and our mm. tempo is... It's not just slow. Sexton sets it's the just... tempo as well, though. Sex... Yeah. Sexton's very slow at arranging what the offense does, mm. and he's very, very quick to lose patience and sit deep and kick the ball in the air. That's true. Now, Ross Byrne is as well, but Billy Burns, by contrast, he he doesn't he doesn't do anything like flash. And and honestly, like the crossfield kick he kicks and the long skip pass, you'd be like, you don't need to make plays out there, kid. Just just catch the ball and give it to Henshaw and then catch the ball just move the ball just move one yeah. one play wider yeah. because Ireland's shape is so rudimentary anyway and so much of what Ireland's attack is about is what happens on the ball but anyway we, we always go off on Ireland and we, we will talk about them a little later on this, this this game was about Wales ultimately it, it was, was about them notching up the win and Ireland will have things to ponder and we'll touch on them in, in more detail when we get into the preview if, if there is more detail to be got indeed, indeed. Uh, yeah so I suppose with that that was the weekend's action it was a fantastic yeah. way to kick off this this historic tournament obviously the lack of crowds was well, a factor in in some games, but also just a bit disappointing given the, the usual colour of the Six was, Nations. I, I enjoyed but... it. I thought it was a great opening weekend yeah. for all kinds of reasons, and I think it sets up the competition in a fascinating way that a lot of folks didn't see coming. It makes Scotland contenders, it makes Wales contenders, England are still in the mix, France are, are now heavy favourites, and Ireland obviously are, are limping along, but could yet rally and be in the mix themselves. True. So you do it have this real five-team bust-up, yeah. and yeah, it's exciting. It's why this competition has has the the moniker the self ascribed moniker of best rugby tournament in the world <laughs> is because um you know they, there's always drama each week, and each weekend can shifts it yeah changes changes the dynamic yeah. at one week at a time and so- thanks for watching the overlap rugby podcast if you enjoyed that video please be sure to like and subscribe and hey if you have an opinion of your own if you disagree with what we're saying Leave a comment down below. We might just get back to you.